number of COVID-19 cases continues to rise globally and right here in Guyana. Therefore, we encourage everyone to practice social distancing. Wear a mask if you have to leave your homes and wash your hands thoroughly and frequently as we all strive to stop the spread of the virus. Welcome to InfoHub for Friday, July 10. Thanks for joining us. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Basil Williams, is reminding the Ghana Elections Commission that it is without power to direct the work of its Chief Elections Officer. More in this story. The AG's condemnation came in wake of a missive by GCOM's Chair Justice Retired Claudette Singh, which ordered CEO Keith Lewinfield to present a North report by 2 p.m. on Friday, using valid votes from the certificates of recount. The Attorney General said if the Chairman advises the CEO what to include in his report, it will amount to a breach of the Constitution, since the Chair will be acting on her own advice, instead of the advice of the CEO as required by law. He said the framers of the Constitution envisaged that the CEO will prepare his report independently under Article 177 to b of the Constitution and Section 86 of the Representation of the People Act, which has also been constitutionalized by Article 162 b of the very Constitution. In her missive on Thursday, Justice Singh alluded to Section 18, of the Election Laws Act, which she said stipulates that the CEO is under the direction and control of the Commission. But the Attorney General pointed out that the Commission cannot rely on the section as it will be in contradiction with both Article 177-2B of the Constitution and Section 86 of the Representation of the People Act. He spoke to Article 8 of the Constitution, which states that the Constitution is the supreme law of Guyana. And if any other law is inconsistent with it, the other law shall be void. For InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. The Prime Minister's office in a statement said it was brought to its attention that unnamed persons were posting defamatory statements on social media against certain high-placed elections officials. This OPM notes is character assassination or mudslinging. It's urging those involved to desist from doing so. The OPM said it is pleased that an outlet, the Ghana News Network, GNN, has distanced itself from one such attack that was made against the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. The Prime Minister's office pointed out that despite Guyana going through a tough political period, all credit goes to the people for keeping the peace and remaining calm. It calls on all Guyanese to reject fake news, rumors and personal threats and to stop sharing them on social media. The Public Health Ministry has provided updated statistics which indicate that Region 1 has the majority of the active COVID-19 cases. A survey has been conducted which highlights the behavioral patterns of Guyanese during the pandemic. Stacey Carmichael has the details. A disaggregation of the Ministry of Public Health's data with regard to positive COVID-19 cases indicates that Region 1 is currently managing 69% of all active cases 46% of all positive cases have recovered thus far, while 6% of all infected cases have died. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Guyana as of Thursday, July 9, is 286, of which 145 were active. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Karen Gordon-Boyle further provided data showing the Guyanese public's behavior and response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Among the findings is that the level of fear of becoming infected with COVID-19 has decreased from 81.6% to 53.5% over a period of four weeks. 30% of persons participating in the survey reported that they are unwilling to give up their regular daily practices. Over 70% indicated that they wear a mask when out in the public. 76% indicated that they wash or sanitize their hands frequently and 58% indicated that they observe social distancing. The information above indicates that most persons are aware of what is needed to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Therefore, it begs this question, what is preventing you from acting on your knowledge? Friends, the popular adage, prevention is still better than cure, is still applicable and more so in the case of COVID-19, where there is no cure and we are up against a new coronavirus that is constantly mutating. So let us put our COVID-19 knowledge to good use. 
The ministry continues to stress the importance of adhering to COVID-19 guidelines while extending an urgent call for persons to particularly observe the curfew and other measures in place to ensure that the spread of COVID-19 in Guyana is contained. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Chair of the Ghana Elections Commission, Justice Retired Claudette Singh, in a press statement today, clarified that she has no knowledge of a conversation in circulation between herself and GCOM's Information Technology Manager, Anil Giddings. The GCOM chair said she is not in any plot to ensure that any particular party is declared winner of the 2020 elections. She noted that there has been a transparent process to count the votes and the legal process has to take its course. Justice Singh said there is absolutely no need for manipulation. The circulation of such recordings and peddling of those allegations, she says, are designed to create mischief in an already tense and charged political environment. She urged those responsible for such unlawful actions to desist from doing so immediately to ensure an environment of thrust, peace and stability. The Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, the Honorable Sidney Alicock, has expressed his disappointment with the reaction of some persons to the decision taken by the Santa Rosa Village Council to put the community on a 14-day lockdown. Sunika Thorne has that story. The lockdown was implemented as the Maruka Subdistrict Village is dealing with an alarming rise in coronavirus cases over the past week. Noting the decision was the necessary one, Minister Adicock said he's very disheartened to learn the actions of some residents as it relates to the implementation of this stringent measure. He highlighted that the fight against the virus cannot be won without the involvement of all. Minister Alcock pointed to the fact that some persons may be asymptomatic, which means they could be infected with the virus and not show symptoms immediately. He reminded that COVID-19 is not selective. It doesn't attack someone based on their race, religion, political affiliation, wealth, status, or the geographical location. Currently, Guyana has lost 16 citizens to the virus with 286 positive cases confirmed. Maruka, with a population of over 10,000 residents, have over 70 confirmed cases and unfortunately also lost one of its residents. Sinclair Thorne, InfoHub. More news after this short break. Please stay with us. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating effect on communities all across Guyana. Many households and individuals now find themselves in need of public assistance. The government of Guyana will be assisting the most vulnerable. Those eligible to apply for this assistance are as follows. Individuals and or households who are currently benefiting from public assistance provided by the Ministry of Social Protection. Individuals and or households who applied for public assistance and are awaiting a response from the Ministry of Social Protection. Individuals and or households who suffered a loss of income due to COVID-19. And households headed by senior citizens or persons with disabilities. Application forms can be downloaded from the Ministry of Social Protection's website at www.mosp.gov.gy or government.gy forward slash eform forward slash 241. For further information, please call these numbers. We are in this together. This is a message from the government of Guyana. We are here to serve you. Welcome back. The Chief Elections Officer, Keith Lowenfield, has written to the Chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission seeking some clarification on her request for him to compile a new report on the election's results. In the letter, Lowenfield told the GCOM Chair that he has read the judgment of the Caribbean Court of Justice and needs some clarifications before preparing his final report. The CEO noted that the recount order cannot be executed in its entirety since the CCJ endorsed the view that GCOM cannot determine credibility. Lewinfield had asked for guidance on how Section 96 of the Representation of the People's Act be properly operationalized. Lewinfield pointed out that the structure of the chairman's letter suggests a change in operational procedures. The GCOM chair on Thursday had written to the CEO requesting that he prepares and submits a new report from the March 2 elections using the valid votes counted in the national recount as they appear on the certificates of recount. 142 Guyanese returned on Thursday via WestJet Airlines, the first repatriation flight from Toronto, Canada. Let's take a look.
Tears and expressions of joy prevailed at the Chedi Jagan International Airport as repatriated citizens breathed a sigh of relief to be on home soil after the COVID-19 pandemic had significantly reduced international travel. 19-year-old Shania Thompson contacted Guyana's consulate in Toronto three months ago, hoping to be reunited with her loved ones in Guyana. Being there alone during the pandemic without my family really took a toll on me. It was a relief. Honestly, I can't believe I'm here right now because I felt as though I was struggling for the four months that I couldn't come home. Noting that she will be occupied with online classes during her time in Guyana, Shania pledged to continue to observe the safety guidelines that kept her safe in Canada, along with the stringent measures set out by the National COVID-19 Task Force, NCTF. For Sean Degar, who was studying in Canada for the past 18 months, living through the pandemic was terrifying. He recalled having to stay indoors for nearly four months as the North American country grapples with approximately 106,000 COVID-19 cases. Sean advises Guyanese to adhere to the gazetted emergency measures. Safety is a big thing and you should keep safe. Some people taking this virus as something jokey, but where we went or where we were, it's very, it's very dangerous because simple things people get contact with. Another citizen, Lisa Thompson, expressed gratitude to be home since she was slated to return nearly three and a half months ago. An optimistic Lisa shared her plans. I think for the next little while, it's going to be a very quiet kind of uh, existence at home. I have the seven days uh, mandatory quarantine that I'm going to adhere to. And I think even beyond that, I am lucky that I have the support, so I don't really need to go out a lot. The NCTF has approved the controlled re-entry of nearly 1,500 persons since June 6. Two additional flights from the USA are scheduled to arrive on July 14 and 15. Students in Trinidad and Tobago and Cuba are expected to return home as well. Natisha Isaacs, Foreign Info Hub. Communication and cooperation are key to promoting unity and bonding within a family for a better relationship, especially during the current COVID-19 pandemic. Neola Damon has the details. This was underscored by University of Guyana UG lecturer and psychologist Will Campbell on a recent airing of the program Social Cohesion in Action, which focused on building positive family relationships. Campbell noted that the pandemic has psychological effects on persons. This, he said, is combined with the adults, breadwinners, having to deal with the issue of loss of income in some cases and the fear of contracting the virus. Hence, communication is crucial to maintain a balance in the home. The, the issue of having to be in the same space, everybody in the same space at the same time, um, at the same time. and for some of us, that that, that it is becoming claustrophobic. In some cases, literally, some of us have smaller homes. And so, you know, everybody is, in some cases, literally stepping on each other's toes. But we need to communicate with each other on, on the, from a position of understanding. Noting that the adults in the home must be able to take into consideration what the other partner is experiencing, Campbell cited an example. A wife might find that her husband is a little edgy and, you know, everything is an issue for him. If she is able to put herself in his shoes and realize that he is, um, his underlying issue is his inability to provide for his family as he's been accustomed to, she might be in a better position to relate to him, understanding that his edginess is not towards her necessarily, but as a result of what he's experiencing as a man unable to provide for his family. Um, the same goes for um, if, it, if it's the other way around. To communicate with each other from a position of understanding, adults need to deal with the issue and not the personality, Campbell explained. Communication in the form of good teamwork cooperation sets the tone for positive parent-to-child communication. Therefore, parents first need to agree with how they are going to deal with the children. He added that there needs to be an agreement among the adults in the home as to what is allowed, what is acceptable, and what is not. Responding to the question about children forced to do the bulk of the house chores instead of focusing on their schoolwork, Campbell noted that children should contribute by doing age-appropriate tasks 
However, it should not take away from the opportunity to develop educationally. Neola Damon, InfoHub. Remember to do your part to ensure that you do not put yourself at risk during this time. If you have a cough, fever, or difficulty breathing, please seek medical care early, but call those hotline numbers first. That's all for today. Connect with us on our social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, as we bring you the latest and important news related to COVID-19 and much more. You can also subscribe to our website, dpi.gov.gy. Your Bridge Report is up next. Have a safe weekend. Goodbye for now.